uh, uh, listeners, the, the camera adds 75 pounds, so I want you to, to, to take that into account. I, I, yeah. um, so the, the thing I was saying before, Luke, yeah. Luke had asked me whether what was the first thing that jumped out at me about uh, Parsha Re. What I said was actually that the at the very beginning it starts, see, I present, you to, I pre- I present before you today a blessing and a curse. Um, and the commentary in, in the art, sc- art scroll Chlemish, that uh, I'm using says um, that you that this, the blessing and curse are not simply promises for the future. One can actually see that people who observe the Torah have a sense of accomplishment, fulfillment, and spiritual growth. And the thing I, I said was that it reminds me of the way uh, Hasidic Jews will wear um, the you know the black hat and the coats in kind of I think they're mimicking the way that the 17th century Polish aristocracy dressed. And the the, the thinking I, I hear is that it it kind of ennobles the Jewish tradition because this is oh, that <laughs> that's my uh, that's the mic that maybe pull it back resorted to yeah. See. oh oh See. crap. Crap! Still? You can hear it. Is it better if I talk like this or like this? <laughs> so maybe like four inches. Okay, yeah. all right. Sell, sell, sell. All right. So I guess we'll just we'll do our best. Yes. Um, all right. Well, w- as I was saying, the, the the beginning of the parsha, where it says that um, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu is presenting us today with both both a blessing and a curse. Um, oh shit. Um, the. the oh, I'll just I've said, I've said it twice. I'll just cut to the chase. That I- the the idea in the commentary is that when you see someone who observes the mitzvot, you, you can see uh, in, in their person the spiritual fulfillment and the joy of, of, of following the tradition. And I said that in my experience I have, I have not seen that in people who are, who dedicate their lives to the Jewish tradition, Orthodox Jews most especially, that in generally I've, it seems to me that people from they don't give off a, a vibe of, of holiness or spiritual growth or fulfillment. That I see much more of that from people who who are immersed in uh, other traditions, um, most other traditions. Um, and I think that a lot of Jews of my ilk have similar experiences. And it's part of the reason we're drawn to other traditions, it's because um, um, the, the practitioners seem to have more of something we want, which is those those kinds of things that that. It says here that fulfilling the mitzvot is supposed to do that sense of of a life well lived um, and a and a spiritually and a holy person. Um, so I was wondering whether uh, is this just something that's wrong with us, or is there something that the that the that the people who follow the mitzvot are not projecting and ought to be projecting? So I asked Luke what he thought about that. I tell you what, there's certainly not certainly not a lot of. Uh feeling in the ethos that uh, <laughs> it's not going to be it's <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you want to divert off Mark because it would be so cool to, to I don't know how to improve. I'll have to let's just keep going alright okay. um, there's certainly not a feeling among most people I know who observe that uh, it is a blessing like it's it's more often referred to as a burden right no, it's the burden of the kingdom of heaven. Um. Hmm. They 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 seem when he is sweating. But Joshua, don't don't take it personally. I, I I always do this. It's it's called yeah. I'm I'm a sweater. It's part of my thing. Chicks dig it, believe it or not. But but uh, the but yeah, they refer to it as a burden. But it's a burden that that the word burden like it's like the yoke of Torah. They right, consider right, it, it's right. it's kind of like. There's some. There's a great dignity in, in assuming this yoke, and right. that for people who Jews who who are not interested, um, well, then for some reason you're not up to it. You're not up to right. accommodating the sturdy right. yoke of Torah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't really buy that. I think that's a bunch of bullshit. Because, uh, you know, there, 
they'll try to tell this to my wife who works 80 hours a week in the county hospital like you're not a serious enough person like for right. for the yoke of torah right. yeah she's like whatever <laughs> yeah i mean and and i think a lot of us feel that way we're serious we're willing to be serious about things that are worth being serious about we're just not persuaded that the jewish tradition um as it's been presented to us anyway is one of those things right huh. but we're open to being persuaded well it definitely says it's a blessing and a curse so the commandments oh, yeah, no, are a blessing. Right. So it doesn't say it's a blessing or a curse. It says it's a blessing and a curse. So it's, so it's both a burden and right. and a blessing. So it, it's not it's not either or. It's it's both. It's both. Which, uh, but it does it does seem that that the blessing is in the blessing comes from observing the the Torah the mitzvot. Um, or, and and the curse is in um, straying. Um, right, that right. That's what it says, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's it gives no hint here that observing the mitzvot is a is a is a is a, burden. a blessing. And it, uh, it's just a blessing, right. um, which it may be. But but what I'm suspicious of is the theory, as posited by Art Scroll, that this blessing is. Not just internal; it's externalized in in a in a, in a vibe of of holiness and spiritual fulfillment. If that's true, then I'd say the vast majority of self-identified Frami Jews are 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 doing something wrong because they don't give off that right, that, right. that impression. Now it says in the Shema that if you observe these commandments, that I will. Uh you know, I'll send the, the, the rain in its time. Right. Um, where is that? That's in this week. It's, it's in this Pasha as well. That, uh, that I'll make sure that all these good things happen to you if you observe the commandments. Right. Um, do you think that's empirically true? Well, it, it's interesting. I mean, <laughs> I guess that's open to debate. I mean, then that's kind of the neat, one of the neat things about, about Judaism, I guess, is that, is that, when um, I actually blogged about this on Juicy the other week, um, when bad shit happens to you, well, that's you must have you must have done something wrong. You must have violated uh, the mitzvot in some way, and 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 then you know all the implicit and explicit threats in the scripture about what happens to you if you do that have been realized. So I was saying that for Tisha B'Av that that it's supposed to be a day in which we can mourn the tragedies of Jewish history but when the when the lesson from the scripture seems to be that well those things happened because you screwed up this way for the first temple, you screwed up this way and when the second temple was destroyed um, and this is why the, the the Jews were expelled from Spain well what are we mourning? We're just mourning our own our own mess ups right. so, and, and I know that logic can be extended to the Holocaust as well and is that the Holocaust was uh, the consequence of of some Jews' failure to properly observe uh, the Torah. So, I mean, I guess it can be empirically true, but only if we assume that all these terrible things that happened throughout Jewish history were the predictable outcome of not observing the Torah. Right, and it's not like uh, it's not like the the good Jews have been have gotten off the, the observant Jews have. have gotten off better and the secular Jews have really suffered uh, there's no there's no real correlation in Jewish history right I, I, yes and, and um, so I guess we can one possible hypothesis then is that even those Jews who have claimed or have attempted to observe the Torah have just done a piss poor job of it such a poor job that they are actually not in any uh, they're in just as egregious a violation of the of the Torah as secular Jews. Um, so if that's true, then I think that would necessitate a, a, a really wholesale rethinking of the way in which rabbinic Judaism tries to live out the, the, the Torah. Right. Because they seem to be they would seem to be really screwing it up if that's if that's true. Um, Another thing that jumps out at me is that it's so clear that the, that the Torah was given for Jews to observe in the land. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, right. it's very Israel centric. Ex- 